Okay. Hey there. This is Renee and Bob from the Tradition School of Herbal Studies, and we're out on a canoe run checking out the plants in Hillsboro River, Florida. And we're going to a place, well, we're in a place called 17 Runs, where you're not supposed to go. It's considered advanced, and we didn't tell anybody, so don't ever do that. Always file a float plan. Mm -hmm. So we got to as far as we could go without starting to porch the canoes, and we decided, like, eh, we're, this is our day off, so this is what we do for fun. We wandered into the swamp a little bit because we're in Florida, and I found one of my favorite plants to talk about. It, it's funny, in some ways I almost compare it to kava, although it doesn't have that um, enzyolytic effect the way so many other things. But this is one of those special plants that we really only find in those boggy, marshy areas where there's not a lot of sunlight. So here we are, we're in a, a cypress swamp uh, in the middle of Hillsborough County. At least I think I'm still in Hillsborough County. And if I can get out here without falling on my butt and getting soaking wet in the mud, I want to show you, and I, I have to admit, this is one of the largest collections of lizard tails that I think I've ever found. I find little ones and twos. That's but, it right there. Uh, I have to record this. Bob's going to fall. Oh, I would never fall in. So there's just this whole field for almost as far as the eye can see. We've got these beautiful plants coming up. And so a little early in the season, they'll get this little white curly uh, tail that comes off it. A flowering it's, shoot. Yes, and, and it's a it's a male non-reproductive uh, comb that comes off of it. And it's funny, I've noticed that there's a couple of different leaf shapes. Anything from almost a squared off arrowhead shape to a more rounded heart shape. And when we look at the leaves and... Renee found a smaller one there. They clasp around the stem, and if you pick one, they're very aromatic. So whenever we have an aromatic plant like this, assuming that it's not something uh, that's going to cause a rash, it's going to have some antiseptic, uh, antimicrobial properties. In this case, not only can it be used topically, uh, which was its primary use, we can use it internally, Careful, Renee, that one's really slippery. I almost went down on that one. <laughs> um, this is used as uh, for paint. So we can use it for traumatology. We can apply it topically to sprain strains. Uh, during the Civil War, when we had a lot of soldiers were fighting in, in the various swamps all the way up into Georgia and so forth, this was used uh, as sometimes a very convenient and uh, locally able to source as a, uh, as a painkiller. And we can find the strongest pain killing is here in the root. So although we can use the leaves topically quite easily just for some mild injuries, we could use this root, which is a really strong smell. And you can see how this white tuber, and when we start to hold it out so they can see, we start to get in there. It's got a lot of scent. So this can be mashed up. This can be held into the mouth or make a decoction. We can make a poultice. We can make a wash. And for things like a wound, uh, we've also got that benefit of its antimicrobial properties in there. The old native Florida use of this, oh, as well so as with what Bob just said, was as what they call a stomatic, mm -hmm. which is to settle down the spasming of your stomach. They do note that it is used as food, but I can tell you there's a toxicity buildup. So you don't eat it too much. It is given to this. sheep and cattle as food, but after a while there's a toxicity buildup for sure. So as a medicine, it's perfect. And you know, and, and Renee may want to talk about this a little bit more, but there's anytime we find an aromatic plant, there's always a, a secondary spiritual use to a plant like this. Um, and we can use these not only to get those invisible uh, microbes off of us that can cause infection and disease and illness, but a lot of times we look at spiritual sickness and that something like this would be used to wipe or, or uh, do a limpia to wipe away or sweep away any disease. Because of its name, it would be something we would use to transform mm. something into something else to be able to morph and come back to life as something else, to regenerate a, a body part, but to regenerate a, a new life for us, to, to shift out of something that was causing pain. 
and we'll be sure to put the the proper Latin name and and a little bit more details once we upload this if we're not in the middle of a swamp but you know wherever we go whether we're in the middle of a cypress swamp whether we're on the edge of the river or in the pine barrens and some of the the hillier parts of Florida we forget that there's unique botany here that has been used by the native people for tens of thousands of years, not only for food, but for medicine and for spiritual medicine as well. So I hope you are able to take a class with us sometime, go on an herb walk and explore all of the wild and urban areas and all that Florida has to offer, so unique here in our tropical environment. This is Bob and Renee from the Tradition School of Herbal Studies talking about lizard tail, Saurus. Bye.